Good afternoon. I'm Ed Hunter, Dean for Medical Education, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all to this virtual class day celebration for the Harvard Medical School and Harvard School of Dental Medicine class of 2021. I so wish we were together under a big tent on the quad on what is truthfully often a day with either a chilly mist or rain or such heat and humidity that many people are actually wearing very little under their graduation robes. But in the past year, we've learned a lot about how we can be socially connected, even if we're physically distanced. And despite another Zoom event, our goal today is to share maximum joy with you, your families, and your loved ones who have Zoomed in to join us. Our graduating students have worked so hard for so many years to get to today. So I wanna start by asking all the families and friends out there in cyberspace to give a hand to the graduate in your family. Now I wanna ask our graduates to give a hand to all your parents and other family and friends and teachers and mentors who have supported and loved you through all those years of hard work. Give them a hand. You know, for me, one of the best things about class day is hearing the student speakers reflect on their time in medical and dental school. One of my favorite observations from a student speech at class day some years ago came from a graduating student who said, you arrive at HMS answering most questions, I don't know. Then after learning from the experts for four or more years, you leave HMS answering most questions, we don't know. I'd like to encourage each of you to think of the medical degree you receive today as your membership card into the we who don't know, but the we who have been prepared and pledged ourselves to find out to find out on behalf of each of your patients based on the most current information that's known today, to find out better answers than are known today by creating the answers of the future through your research, and by solving the systemic problems that may underlie the question that was asked through your advocacy for positive social change. And on that note, I wanna end by complimenting this class for the magnificent graduation oath that you composed and we'll be reciting together shortly. It is absolutely inspirational in its pledge to do all that and more. And I join all of your loved ones and teachers in telling you that I couldn't be more proud of you today. And I couldn't be more excited to have you join our alumni family that will continue our connections in so many wonderful ways and to have you join us as colleagues in this work, this mission to alleviate human suffering in this noble profession that is more important in the year 2021 and into the future than ever before. We love you and I'm giving you each a virtual hug. Uh, please remember to take care of yourselves and to take care of one another because by the way, your ability to take care of your patients depends on it. And now to introduce our class day moderators who put this entire event together, I'd like to turn it over to someone whose contributions to this class are impossible to describe in words, someone who's been devoting himself to you year in and year out, day in and day out, our amazing Dean for Students, Dr. Fidenzio Saldana. Over to you, Fidenzio. Thanks very much, Ed. And a warm welcome to all of the family, friends, and loved ones of the graduates. And a big congratulations to all of the graduates of HMS and HSDM. As I was thinking about today, I reflected back on your first day of school back in the TMEC Amphitheater. I put a picture of my kids up and we chatted about the promise and potential that we saw in all of you on that day. You have definitely fulfilled that potential and much more here at HMS and HSDM. Today, I just wanted to leave you with the small pieces of advice we talked about that day. The first is to continue to work hard. You've worked incredibly hard during your four plus years here at HMS and HSDM, and we know that you will continue to do so in the future. You will make an incredible impact on all of the patients that you care for. Number two is be kind to yourself and to all of those around you. Being kind to yourself is particularly important as you continue along the challenging but fulfilling road of medicine and dentistry. And finally, don't forget to have fun. Particularly remember to do things that bring you joy. Continue to connect with family, friends, and loved ones. 
Congratulations and good luck to all of you. With that, I'd like to turn it over to our three Class Day co-moderators who've done a tremendous amount of work to make this program possible. It is my pleasure to introduce Troy Amen, Vartan Pahalayans, and Nick DeMeo. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome all to Harvard Medical School and Harvard School of Dental Medicine's Class Day Ceremony. First, a heartfelt thank you to Dean Staley, Hundred, and Soldania, who brought us to this important milestone in our lives during the course of very unprecedented times, who continue to inspire us to this day with their wisdom, courage, poise, and kindness. Thank you so much. Thank you as well to our unsung heroes, the custodial staff and the caretakers of this wonderful institution. To those involved in dining services, we've missed you all deeply and we thank you for making our education possible. And most importantly, a tremendous thank you to all our loving family, friends, and mentors. Your encouragement and your unwavering support during long hours in the hospital and during grueling exams have given us the strength and the confidence to arrive at this beautiful moment. And we are here because of you. Lastly, thank you to the unforgettable class of 2021, a class marked by resilience, by hope, and by a deep love for one another. What an unforgettable journey we've taken together and what a privilege we share to graduate here from Harvard Medical School. Hello everyone, thank you and welcome to the HMS and HSTM Class Day Ceremony. My name is Nicholas DeMeo and I am president of the Class of 2021 at the Harvard School of Dental Medicine. While the past year has given us all unprecedented challenges, I am thrilled to celebrate the achievements and resiliency of the Class of 2021 here with you all today. We have only grown stronger in our mission to alleviate suffering and improve the health of our greater community. As we transition from student to doctor to continue this mission, we also join an accomplished group of Harvard alumni. To welcome us as the newest members of this community is Dr. A. W. Karchmer, the Chair of Alumni Relations. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be with you this afternoon. Uh, preferably it would be face to face but uh, given the circumstances virtually, we'll have to do for yet another year at class day. First, uh, let me congratulate uh, you, the members of uh, the class of 2021 at Harvard Medical School and Harvard School of Dental Medicine. Your graduation is a great accomplishment. I also want to congratulate your parents and your loved ones who have stood by you uh, as you've gone through this educational process and been so important in supporting you. Welcome to the Alumni Association. Uh, we are delighted to have you join us. We look forward to you uh, also joining our efforts uh, as we attempt to support the school and particularly to support future generations of students coming through. You are poised to step into exciting and challenging uh, careers. Uh, we are confident that you are well prepared uh, to do so and hope that you will find those careers uh, incredibly fulfilling. Uh, you will, however, face the continued COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, hopefully, uh, it is abating in the U.S., but it will continue to be a crisis globally. The pandemic has brought out some of the best in healthcare providers. Uh, including yourselves as you've engaged the students. Altruism, humanism, compassion, selflessness, and a strong desire to relieve suffering. These are the characteristics that bought, brought you here, and hopefully they will continue. It also, unfortunately, has exposed some of the weaknesses and the worst aspects of our healthcare system. The inequities that exist and the adverse consequences of the social determinants of health and health care. As you leave the school and join the Alumni Association, we welcome you to join in the work to relieve suffering by patient care, by doing research, and particularly by addressing these exposed inequities uh, and the adverse consequences of social determinants of health care and health things that many of you have actually already been doing as students. As a first step, I invite you to join us virtually, of course, uh, but for the reunion events on the afternoon of June 4th. 
particularly for the symposium entitled COVID-19, A Wake-Up Call, Racial Justice in Medicine. Again, congratulations. Welcome to the Alumni Association. Every good wish for you personally and professionally as you go forward. Thank you again. Thank you, Dr. Karchmer. Next, I have the pleasure of introducing my classmate and our first class day speaker, Isabel Wachanko, with a speech titled, Compassion Takes Intentional Practice. What stories are you carrying within to be here today? How much did you dream of this moment, not only for yourself, but for everyone you carry within your heart? I ask these questions because when I reflect on the skills that we've been developing since day one of medical school, I realize that the heart of what we've been learning is the ability to celebrate one another's stories, to honor the humanity of anyone we encounter. Yes, we have learned the clinical pearls of medicine. We have gone from needing minutes to work together during first year and discuss vital signs to reviewing them in seconds on the hospital floor. We have gone from having no idea what the kidney does to having a slightly better idea of what the kidney does. We have made our first surgical incision. We have made our first correct identification of heart sounds, our first delivery of a newborn. And all along, throughout these precious medical school firsts, we were learning to listen. We were learning to listen for the music that makes the patient in front of us tick. We were learning to listen for their stories and history that's vibrating just below the surface. Because daily in medical school, we have practiced the language of asking, how are you today? Conveying to the person in front of us, maybe a stranger seconds ago, that I am here for you. To think that every Wednesday during first year, we practiced how to do patient interviews. We watched recordings of ourselves interviewing, asking ourselves, did I listen for what wasn't said? Did I fully show up for this patient? And do I fully understand this patient's story? Practicing listening. This is powerful because in practicing listening and practicing connecting with one another every day, we were practicing and cultivating compassion. And in cultivating compassion, we were learning not only to be good clinicians, but kind humans, kind leaders. Perhaps one of the hardest and yet most beautiful aspects of learning to be a clinician is learning that we and the patients open up our hearts to work together toward healing. And isn't that what good leadership is? Meeting someone where they are, understanding their story, and working together with them to do the hard work. To close, I would like to reflect on another skill that we've been practicing every day in medical school, reading the room. Now as doctors, as kind leaders, we have a duty not only to read the room, but to build it. We can look around the room and ask the tough questions. Questions like, who even gets to be in the room? as a healthcare provider, as a patient with access to healthcare, whose voices are being heard and whose voices aren't even there and therefore whose stories are not being told. In a world confronting COVID, confronting structural and historical inequities, confronting racism, we have a duty to ask those tough questions because living with compassion takes intentionality. Listening, really listening to someone takes practice and leadership takes all of these things. 
Since day one of medical school, we have nurtured not only our scientific curiosity, but our ability to show up for one another and to fundamentally change the room. Today, may we celebrate the stories that we carry within. May we celebrate the stories of the many patients who have taught us along the way. May we honor the stories that don't get to be told. And may we commit to building spaces where everyone can be heard. Growing together, learning together over these past few years and seeing how you all treat your patients has taught me just how expansive and deeply kind the human heart can be. To this group of kind doctors, kind leaders, congratulations. Thank you so much, Isabel, for a beautiful and inspiring speech. I now have the pleasure to introduce our second class day speakers, one of my good buddies and probably the swaggiest dude on campus, Jamaji Wanaji and Weeram. The title of Jamaji's speech is all along the way. Congratulations. You made it. In the end, I was so sure that all of those sacrifices would be worthwhile. Many of us have or will hear phrases just like this. And absolutely, you have worked hard and you should be celebrated. However, after over 3 million deaths worldwide, after the last 16 or so months of fear, suffering, isolation, and economic strife, it seems inappropriate, even disrespectful, if we don't stop to add a bit more to those words of commendation. In all honesty, we have long praised resilience, hailing those who were strong and despite the obstacles, found or made a way. Yet, the COVID-19 pandemic has helped more of us realize what many others have long known. Just because a person doesn't make it to the finish line doesn't always mean that he or she didn't work as hard as those who did. And more importantly, those of us who do cross the finish line, along with those of us who recognize and hail resilience, have a responsibility. A responsibility to work towards the removal of systemic barriers that, in spite of their drive, willpower, and efforts, hold so many people back. These ideas should be important in business, law, or any field of study. But these ideas should be especially important to professionals who work every day to heal others. We often reflect on the vulnerability of our patients, how we serve them, offering them strength in their moments of suffering. But during this pandemic, when stockpiles of masks and other protective equipment ran low, new light was shown on our vulnerability. But in all honesty, despite any prestige that our profession may have, we have always been vulnerable. We will always be vulnerable. And in this most recent moment of vulnerability, it was everyday people people who we did not even know, who heeded stay-at-home orders, refrained from buying medical masks, donated masks, and did so much more to help keep us safe. They didn't wait for us to walk across the stage before they helped. They helped us, then and there, in our moment of need. So to our friends, family, loved ones, and those who we have never met. Thank you for celebrating with us in this moment. But even more, thank you for all that you did all along the way. Your actions demonstrate what we all should now know, that the practice of medicine extends 
well beyond what happens in a hospital. Through our everyday actions, we are in an ongoing state of being in service with each other. That is perpetually being in service of and being served by each other. That's how this thing called life works. And none of us ever, ever, ever does it all alone. And because we're in this together, we all have a responsibility to make sure that we speak out and act to make life more equitable for all of us. We all have a responsibility to figure out how to eliminate gun violence, including police violence against unarmed persons. We all have a responsibility to eradicate racism that has for far too long kept able and willing persons from entering and graduating from medical school and having a fair shot in anything else that they pursue. Even if you don't know these people, even if you will never face the exact obstacles they face, we all still have a responsibility to address inequities in our society, not later, but right now, in this present moment of need. As onerous as these feats may sound, I remain hopeful because many of us have already started doing this important work as students. Even when the path gets rough, remain steadfast and know that you are never alone. My name is Jumaji Wanaji Enwara, a proud member of the Harvard Medical School graduating class of 2021. And to each of you, I say, congratulations, you made it. Sure, all of those efforts appear to be worth it here at the end. But hopefully, we also worked and continue to work in service with those around us to make those same efforts worthwhile all along the way. Thank you. And Godspeed. Thank you, Jumaji. It is now my pleasure to introduce my classmate and friend, Ashiana Jivrosh, who will be delivering the Harvard School of Dental Medicine Class Day speech. The title of Ashiana's speech is Into the Unknown. Class of 2021, administration, faculty, staff, families, champions, and anyone else who happens to find this video. Hello, and welcome to the day we truly never expected to arrive especially in light of the current climate. I'm so honored to speak today as a part of the HSDM class of 2021, a class I've only been a part of for the last two years as I stepped out to pursue my MBA in 2017. I have, thus, had experiences with two different classes of 2019, and I'd be remiss not to highlight them. Classes of 2019, shout out to you. As slow as I was in figuring out how to graduate from Harvard, I came to this path with intention. Nine years ago, I was traveling in India and I met a woman who changed my life. It's remarkable. The moments that you often don't know will make an impact can change the entire course of who you become. I don't even know her name. She was a woman who came into a dental clinic I'd found myself in. She was making the decision between dealing with a massive abscess causing her immense pain and putting food on the table. She didn't know how to navigate the system, how to pay for her care, how to figure out what to do. And she was able to soldier through the absolute unknown and it made her the picture of resiliency. It is she that I think of when starting this speech. When we arrived on this campus, we were lucky. Most of us didn't know how we made it here and what gift of fate got us to this point. We too were navigating a system that we didn't know. And other than the few not so rare ones, <coughs> oral surgery, <coughs> we weren't sure what we were going to be and how we were going to get there. 
especially after failing time and time again in identifying normal versus abnormal cells in histology, identifying the wrong vessels in anatomy, or adding absolutely nothing beyond gout to our differential diagnoses in the flipped classroom. Coming to the dental school, we struggled to make convergent preparations, or even know what that means, identify the salivary bacterial load, and to meet our first patient and promise them treatments we were learning at the same time. Yet, after every setback over the last four to six, or even, what, 20, Ryan, our ENT turned dentist, we've all learned to navigate a school system that pushed us to thrive in the unknown. If anything, HSDM has taught us to be flexible, to be agile, and to get back up when we fall. It has made us resilient. Angela Duckworth states, nobody wants to show you the hours and hours of becoming. They'd rather show the highlight of what they've become. In many ways, this speech is the summation of four plus years of becoming, becoming practitioners, friends, support systems, significant others, pet parents, and overall adults. But it is just the start of our journey. As our class scatters to all parts of this country, and some to others, into specialties, general practice, continuing education, and the wild unknown, I wanted to take a moment to reflect on the grit I took to get here while remaining grateful to those who helped us along the way. So I look to you, parents, faculty, mentors, friends, loved ones, staff, and supporters. And I think the whole class would agree that without you, we would not have made it. This day is much more yours than it is ours. And without you, we wouldn't have had the strength to navigate this journey. It was made even rockier this past year by COVID. And somehow I see my classmates flourishing with higher spirits than anyone could have imagined, despite the high global cost of getting here. And while we all may be a little deaf and hoarse from shouting through three centimeters of plastic over the excessive vacuuming clinics, we somehow have all finished our requirements shared cases, though it wasn't always that easy, learned to leave space for one another, fell in love with soy milk, attended Zoom University, only mildly causing one another distractions, and still managed to, for the most part, answer the question of what's next. As Harvard School of Dental Medicine graduates, we have an inordinate power to shape policy and to make a difference in this space. We will learn to hear our patients, giving names to those once nameless and empathizing with those who have problems beyond our scope, like the woman from India. We have learned that not only is the mouth the gateway to the body, but that we can make immense impact daily on the field of healthcare. My idol and magical mentor, Albus Dumbledore, once said, it is our choices that show what we truly are far more than our abilities. And I have no doubt that the class of 2021 will make some exceptional choices. I look forward to continue to navigate the unknown with you, to work through challenges, and to remain family. Congratulations, we did it! Thank you, Oceana. It's an extraordinary honor to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Valerie Montgomery Rice. Dr. Rice is currently the president and dean of Morehouse School of Medicine. She's the first female to lead Morehouse School of Medicine and has extensive experience in patient care, medical research, organizational management, and public health policy. She's also a graduate of Harvard Medical School, class of 1987. As a leading infertility specialist and researcher, Dr. Rice was founding director of the Center for Women's Health Research at Meharry Medical College, one of the nation's first research centers dedicated to studying the greater risk that women of color have for diseases such as cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and HIV, as well as factors including biology, race, and economics, and how they contribute to women's health disparities. As an accomplished physician, scientist, and national leader in healthcare, Dr. Rice is a dynamic leader and role model for all students and faculty. Dr. Rice's career reflects her commitment to education, service, and advancing health equity, core web values that we uphold here at HMS and HSDM. Born in Georgia, she received a bachelor's degree in chemistry from the Georgia Institute of Technology. After receiving her medical degree from HMS, she completed her residency in obstetrics and gynecology at Emory University School of Medicine. 
She followed that with a fellowship in reproductive endocrinology and infertility at Hudson Women's Hospital at the Detroit Medical Center. Dr. Rice has received numerous awards and honors, including being elected a member of the National Academy of Medicine and receiving the American Medical Women's Association 2011 Elizabeth Blackwell Medal, as well as the National Medical Association's ob 2019 Legend of the Section Award. In 2016, she was also honored with the membership in the Horatio Aldrich Association of Distinguished Americans and received the 2017 Horatio Aldrich Award. She has received honorary degrees from the University of Massachusetts Medical School and Rush University. We're deeply honored to have Dr. Rice share her wisdom with this year's graduating students as we officially become physicians and dentists. Thank you for that kind introduction. And thank you to the Harvard Medical and Dental Class of 2021 for inviting me to be your class day speaker this year. I am deeply honored that you chose me, particularly at this time in history, a time that has seen the devastation of a global pandemic on the lives of millions of people. Yet, we have also witnessed the incredible heroic response by members of the medical professions and the scientific community that have inspired all of us. So it is humbling for me to have this opportunity to join you today as you begin your careers in a healthcare system that has been forever changed by once in a century worldwide healthcare crisis. Having said this, I have to admit that when Dr. Daly asked me to speak, I was thrilled as any alumnus would be to return to the alma mater to speak to a graduating class. I immediately started to think about my own class day in 1987 and all the various experiences at Harvard that led to that moment. Now, I imagine that most of you were not around in 1987. So I feel it's important that I go back in time and start my address with the reflections of a young, much younger, Valerie Montgomery who came to Boston in the summer of 1982 to participate in a health professions program aimed at increasing the number of minorities applying to medical school and then matriculating as a medical student in the fall of 1983. I grew up in Macon, Georgia, a mid-sized city about an hour south of Atlanta. So when I first arrived in Boston, there were many things that were foreign to me, like snow, and ride in the subway. It was both a culture shock and enlightenment. I remember being so impressed with the breadth of museums and artistic events in the city. Yet, it was also very different than what I experienced growing up in Georgia. To say the least, I was out of my comfort zone during my time here, but I enjoyed learning what would be life lessons from the experience. Like a lot of lessons we learn, they occurred in small but instructive moments. For example, I remember at one point during my years here, a professor changed the date of the major exam, and one of my more obviously privileged than I classmates was upset because he could not go to Augusta. Growing up in Macon, Georgia, I also spent summers with my grandmother in Rens, Georgia not far from Augusta. In my mind, there was nothing special about Augusta. So I asked, why do you want to go to Augusta? And he replied, the masters. And immediately in my mind, I questioned, master for what? Is he studying to get a master's degree? While I stood confused as to why he was upset about a trip to Augusta, he was similarly confused though, <laughs> as to how someone from Georgia would not know about the masters. What he didn't realize was that most African-Americans in Georgia, even in the 1980s, didn't go to the masters unless they were a caddy or a waiter. And African-American spectators were not welcomed by some there in attendance. At another point in time, I entered an elevator and asked another person to mash Floor three, and this person turned to me and said that he wasn't sure MASH was a real word. Now, I can tell you in Georgia, 
Mash is a real word. But it was another reminder in my early years of how little differences in perspective mean a great deal and how we all relate to each other. If you think about it, it is not a great leap from a difference of understanding over the word mash to the interpretations of Black Lives Matter or the difference in understanding by a group of people refusing to wear a mask because of political, not health reasons. Perspective and experience shape our worldview and dictate our responses. A simple change of words, mash instead of press, or perhaps the phrase, three please, a simple change of words created a difference between me and the other person on that elevator. The different experience around the masters created a divide between me and my classmates. The question I continue to wrestle with, even today as I speak to you though, is whether this is a perceived difference, a perceived divide. What do these experiences mean? Now I know many of you have similar stories, seemingly small moments that left an indelible impression because it highlighted a difference, a gap, perhaps a divide. Now, there were also some big moments, none more impactful, though, than the passing of my lab partner, Marlon Sellers, a kind, gentle, thoughtful individual who endured my fear of anything that had more than four legs and crawled, which he kindly took care of for me, either in Vanderbilt Hall or as we were leaving the anatomy lab on late evenings. I thought I wanted to be a neurosurgeon. He too had a surgical interest, but advised that we were early on in our exposure so we could keep an open mind. I remembered that as I completed my third year and chose reproductive endocrinology as my subspecialty, I first had to complete a residency in OBGYN. Marlon's voice was in my ear. Keep an open mind. Thank goodness for the sound advice of Dr. Avin Poussin and Ms. Brenda Lee and the bedside manner of Drs. Isaac Schiff and Bob Barbieri, the patience of Dr. Dan Toshinsky as I started my research adventures, and of course, my long-term mentor to this day, Dr. Ann Kiesling, who showed me that you could be a mother, a wife, a scientist, all at the same time, and be excellent at all three. More than any other event, Marlon's death brought home to me just how fragile life is and how important it is not to waste our time on Earth. While the others laid the foundation for understanding medicine and science, Marlon's passing emphasized to me that inherent in a medical career is our individual call into a higher purpose. What you will do every day will have a tremendous impact on the lives of everyone in your care. Now, I tell you about my years at Harvard Medical School, both the big and little things, some of the people who left their imprint, because you cannot even begin to fathom how this experience will affect your career and your ability to care for your patients in the future. It's not just the great education you have received. It is the integration of that education with your life that will shape the lens by which you will deliver care. And your life experiences are being influenced by what is happening in the world around you, which brings me to the first of the three areas I want to talk to you about today. Where are we at this point in time? Followed by what we have learned and finally why it matters as you embark on your professional journeys. Because of COVID-19, this pandemic, you are graduating at an inflection point in the history of healthcare. When we look back, we can only see a handful of Harvard Medical School graduates who've had the same experience. For example, the graduating class of 1921 started their career shortly after the Spanish flu pandemic. 
They entered a period of time that was marked by a wave of public health initiatives around the world, including the first centralized system for reporting disease in the United States. The 1920s was also the heyday of the progressive social movement, including the fight for women to be able to vote, regulating monopolies, and applying the scientific method to other disciplines like finance and business management, and even the family. Today, we are also living in a time of social reckoning and political divide. When I came to Harvard, the country was starting to turn to a more conservative social and political viewpoint. The early 80s followed almost two decades of a more progressive social movement with initiatives that included the civil rights movement. And being transparent, those initiatives helped more African-Americans attend Harvard Medical School. You see, I grew up during this time, and it has shaped my life to not only become a medical doctor, but to focus on minority women's health and to increase the number of African-American physicians in the country through the work we do at Morehouse School of Medicine. Today in the United States and many other countries around the world, we appear to be at a crossroads. Will we continue to adhere to a more conservative tilt in our country and the world? Or will we move toward the trend to a more progressive posture? The direction we choose will have a resultant impact on healthcare delivery and the state of health in this country and the world. Will we expand access to quality health care for all people or reduce or eliminate the Affordable Care Act? Will the majority of the country again embrace science and scientists or decide to ignore the opinions of public health experts? And will we finally recognize that African Americans and people of color and persons in underserved communities continue to suffer from health disparities that impact and disrupt their lives? Or will we decide that the best health care will go only to a select few? As the newest generation of health care practitioners, you will have the responsibility to help determine the path we take as a country and as a society. Secondly, as you decide how you will address these issues as a medical or dental professional, you will have the benefit of the lessons we have all learned because of this pandemic. Dr. King was so right when he wrote in this letter in the Birmingham jail. Many only quote the last sentence of the full quote on mutuality. But what he completely wrote in that jail was that all this is simply to say that all life is interrelated. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. As long as there is poverty in the world, no man can be totally rich, even if he has a billion dollars. As long as diseases are rampant and millions of people cannot expect to live more than 20 or 30 years, no man can be totally healthy, even if he just got a clean bill of health from the finest clinic in America. Strangely enough, I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And you can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. COVID-19 has taught us that the health of each person not only affects the health of every person, but literally can bring the world to its knees. For the past year, the pandemic has shut down life as we knew it. And if we didn't appreciate it before, we cannot ignore the fact that our individual survival is linked together in one humanity. No matter the color of your skin, our background, our age, our sexual orientation, or other differences. Living our best, healthiest life is incumbent on making sure we have access to quality, affordable health care. 
Health equity is not a not just a nice thing to have. It is absolutely absolutely necessary that we provide people with what they need, when they need it, and the amount they need to reach their optimal level of health. Because every health inequity reduces the quality of life for everyone else. The pandemic has shined a spotlight on the historic health disparities and the lack of health equity faced by minority communities. Inequities that were built on the historic racial injustice and systemic racism that has long been present in our country. So while we battled COVID-19, we also experienced a wave of social activism following the tragic killing of George Floyd last year. Unfortunately, racial and social tensions are only intensifying as we witness continuing attacks on Asian Americans, increasing aggression toward undocumented immigrants, and growing violence against persons in the trans community, and the unconscionable killing of Black men by law enforcement and by each other. This is the world in which you are starting your work. So thirdly, the question is, why does it matter to you? I hope your answer is that as a practitioner, and more importantly, a Harvard Medical School educated practitioner or a Harvard Dental School educated practitioner, you have been taught to seek a higher calling. You not only want the patients you care for to be healthy and live good lives, you want all people around the world to receive quality health care. And you believe your job is not to just treat patients and provide care, but to improve the health and well being of individuals, families, and communities. From this day onward, based on who is sitting in front of you, I want you to ask yourself not what I can do to help this person or even what I should do to help this person. I want you to ask yourself, based on who's sitting in front of me, what's possible? And when you ask that question, consider the whole person. If you want them to walk more, do they live in a safe neighborhood where that's possible? If you are referring them to a specific orthodontist, orthodontist, excuse me, Do they have reliable transportation to make it to that appointment? Can they even afford that referral? If you have access to that little known NIH investigational drug therapy for the rare disease that your patient sitting in front of you has been diagnosed to have, do you see this person in their fullest potential and offer them the opportunity to participate in the clinical trial? As you practice medicine and provide dental care or seek the answers to our most profound questions through research, seek opportunities to serve those who don't have your background and have a different perspective on life. Try to understand why someone may say, mash the elevator button, and another person may say, press the elevator button. No matter your race, age, gender, identity, or background, expand your perspective to understand the background of others. That person sitting in front of you and how knowing about them might not only affect their current state of health, but their whole approach to health. This is what we mean by culturally competent care. We, the providers, are the ones who must constantly strive to be more competent. We can do all of this by simply taking the time to dive a bit deeper into the reasons behind a patient or patient's group proclivity for a disease. I also urge you not to practice medicine and avoid, but to engage in the whole world around you and bring that interaction into your work every day. It is easy to get lost in the science of medicine, but you have a responsibility to bring your voices 
to the discussion around the broader ills that impact society, racism, violence, discord. Your voice and presence matters. You are graduates of Harvard Medical School and Harvard School of Dental Medicine. And I can assure you that your degree and the network you have through Harvard will open a lot of doors for you and afford you opportunities to advance your career. I also know how hard you have worked to reach this moment. I experienced it and I watched my daughter Jane, a 2020 HMS graduate, experienced it also. And we, like you, had our ceremony in our living room with just a close knit of friends and family. I can guarantee you the long hours and sacrifices were necessary. But I ask you to not see this day as just an achievement. I really want you to see it today as a blessing that you are going to share with those you will be privileged to care for. And if you do this, then your life's work will be wrapped in love. And as the famous African-American Daniel Hale Williams said, anything is possible when it's done in love. And everything you can do should be done in love or it will fail. Thank you for allowing me to spend some time with you on this momentous day in your lives. The best to each of you. Go forth and do good. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Montgomery Rice. It is my honor to introduce you to the Dean of the Harvard School of Dental Medicine, Dr. William Ginobili. Congratulations, graduates. As we join you, your families, faculty, and friends here today, I want to say how immensely proud we all are of you. You've exhibited true determination and professionalism during such a challenging year. Your hard work over these past four years and your strong dedication and experience on the front lines of the pandemic has shaped you into the amazing healthcare providers you have become and set you on a course for a bright future ahead. When I started my role as Dean of Harvard School of Dental Medicine in September of last year, I was so eager to meet the 34 pre-doctoral students in the class of 2021. I was also apprehensive. How would our students on campus recognize me behind a surgical mask? And how would I get to know them by sight? In dentistry, we know how important a smile is in making a first impression. It turns out our students were not shy to approach me and I've gotten pretty good at recognizing faces from the bridge of the nose up. And we have all mastered the art of smizing or smiling with our eyes. Masks have become an important part of our existence these days. And it's only now in an outdoor setting, physically distanced and fully vaccinated that I appear unmasked to share today's remarks. Masks became not only necessary to mitigate the spread of COVID-19, but symbolic of our commitment to public health. As healthcare providers, you've warned them for the public good, to support and safely treat your patients in the delivery of care and with the purpose of working to end this virus, eliminate pain, suffering, and promote oral and total body health. I've witnessed our students treat patients with kindness, caring, and dignity, and I admire this class for your tenacity and your true desire to help others without worrying about your own recognition. During your tenure at HSDM, you've demonstrated your commitment to advancing health equity and diversity in dentistry. Almost a third of the individuals in the class have served as diversity and inclusion fellows and have been active in pipeline programs such as the Bridge to Dental School. Others have promoted health literacy and served in outreach roles to increase access to oral health care in communities most in need. You've also shown a commitment to our environment and inspired sustainability practices at HSDM by reducing waste in our clinical settings, organizing the Countway Community Garden, 
and advancing goals for a more sustainable future for our patients and our profession. And when the, the pandemic hit, you took action. You got involved in efforts to mobilize resources. You researched new learning models and contributed to biomedical research on the delivery of remote dental education. As author of GRIT, Angela Duckworth once said, as much as talent counts, effort counts twice. You are a tremendously talented class. However, I'm even more amazed by how much you have overcome to get to this day. This year, you faced so many hurdles with grace and determination, and you've become skilled clinicians and compassionate caregivers. The grit you have demonstrated over these four years has prepared you well for a critical time in our nation's healthcare system, a system I am confident you will contribute to and innovate. I'm delighted to recognize our 34 individuals receiving their Doctor of Dental Medicine degree today. Many of you in the class will go on to specialty residencies across the country. Others will pursue entrepreneurial plans, private practice, or work in service to our government in roles in the VA or military. Wherever you go, I know that your talents will take you far. You will join a distinguished group of alumni who are making a difference through leadership roles in global health, research, academia, healthcare, government, and business. I know you will represent your school well in everything you choose to do. On behalf of our entire HSDM community, we all wish you the very best and hope that you continue to stay in touch with us as you become alumni of the school. We will all be watching proudly and smizing all the way. Dr. Aisha Kaylee Ba. Dr. Preston Ellen Mercurius Banu. Dr. Leela C.V. Brightman. Dr. Emily Weiling Chen. Dr. Yu Owen Chang. Dr. Hesu Chang. Dr. Paul Yongwook Chang. Dr. Alexander M. Cruz Wongma. Dr. Nicholas Paul DeMeo. Dr. Alicia Desai. Dr. Quang H. Do. Dr. Idris Durrani. Dr. Casey Disney Ha. Dr. Jacqueline Rochelle Harris. Dr. Tian Tian Karen He. Dr. Edward Joseph Hilton IV. Also receiving a Master's of Business Administration, Dr. Ashiana Jivraj. Dr. David Later Cornmell. Dr. Jennifer Aaron Lee. Dr. Chanja Lin. Dr. Jia Chen Lin. Dr. Nikhil Mystery. Dr. Andrew Page. Dr. Ashwini Parchere. Dr. Dalton M. Pham. Dr. Daniel Mark Roystacker. Dr. Sean Seagal. Dr. Ida Shadrav. Dr. Daniel Weichung Shen. Dr. Carlos Alberto Thomas. 
Dr. Ryan Anthony Williams, Dr. Emily Wu, Dr. Ornella Jory, Dr. Harad Zafari. It is now my honor to introduce the Dean of Harvard Medical School, Dr. George Daly. After earning his bachelor's degree magna cum laude from Harvard in 1982, he earned his PhD in biology at MIT. He received his MD from HMS graduating in 1991, the rare distinction of summa cum laude, an honor HMS has awarded only 18 times in the school's history. He then pursued clinical training at Mass General and was a clinical fellow at Brigham and Women's Hospital and Boston Children's. After an active clinical practice in hematology and oncology at Mass General and Boston Children's, he assumed his administrative role as the director for the Pediatric Stem Cell Transplantation Program at Dana-Farber and Boston Children's, a post he held until assuming his current position as Dean of the Faculty of Medicine. Dean Daly has served as a member of the HMS faculty since 1995. In 2010, he became a full professor at HMS. Dean Daly's research focuses on the mechanisms that underlie blood disorders and cancer. In past research, he demonstrated the central role of bcr able oncoprotein in human chronic myelogenous leukemia, work that provided the critical target validation for the development of Gleevec, a highly effective therapy for cancer. Again, it is my distinct privilege to welcome Dean Daly. Harvard Medical School and Harvard School of Dental Medicine Class of 2021, it's my pleasure to celebrate with you and your families and loved ones today and my privilege to congratulate you on becoming Harvard's newest doctors and dentists. Like all of you, I wish we were celebrating together in person. I wish we could be gathered under the tent in the majestic Harvard Medical School quadrangle with friends, family, and colleagues. With the successful rollout of vaccinations, I think we can all see a future when we will indeed gather again together. But in the meantime, I hope that you, our graduates, are safe and surrounded by your family and friends enjoying a private celebration. Today marks the culmination of your years of hard work, your sacrifices, and your profound commitment to the calling of medicine. Today is the end of your many years as a student and the beginning of your many years as a doctor dedicated to serving and caring for others. In truth, however, all of us in this noble profession, you, your teachers, your attending physicians, your deans, all of us who have chosen medicine as our life's calling will forever be students. Medicine is constantly evolving and always unpredictable. Whatever your chosen specialty or discipline, every day will bring new questions, new unknowns, and new events that will challenge your knowledge and confidence. Over the past year, this truth has never been more apparent. Class of 2021, you have witnessed an epic-defining public health crisis. Decades from now, you'll think back on this past year and reflect on those experiences. I hope those reflections include a recognition of how what we have learned in this past year have placed all of you on a path to make the world a safer and more just place. COVID-19 has changed the world, but today you stand as the newest foot soldiers in a war that is much more than a battle against a single virus. Over the past year, you have witnessed how the inadequacies and deep frailties of our healthcare system have been laid bare. If there was ever a notion that we as doctors serve best when we diagnose and treat disease, we can safely put that quaint notion to rest. To truly care for our patients, we must be activists, we must be advocates, we must be agents for change. Whether by encouraging adherence to public health measures, combating vaccine hesitancy, or fighting to repair a healthcare system riddled with deep disparities for people of color, a system that tolerates inequities, leaving millions unprotected or poorly protected, from what should be every individual's fundamental right to health care. Medicine 
has always been a demanding profession. And today it is as challenging a profession as perhaps it has ever been. But when I look at you, the class of 2021, I am inspired and I am truly optimistic for our future. Over the past year, I've witnessed heroism in medicine, from physicians working tirelessly on the front lines, sometimes outside their areas of specialty, recalling skills from their earliest days of training, to nurses serving as intensely direct caregivers at personal risk and serving as proxies for family members who weren't allowed to enter an ICU, from the support staff maintaining our medical facilities to the scientists uniting to elevate the priorities of the pandemic over their individual goals. You, class of 2021, you were right there with them. You helped found a nationwide movement to aid frontline healthcare workers. You formed rapid response teams to support and inform at-risk populations. You mobilized voters, promoted civic engagement, you developed new approaches to COVID-19 screening for the most vulnerable, and you created a COVID-19 curriculum that has been adopted at medical schools and by healthcare professionals in more than 100 countries on six continents. All the while, you excelled at your studies. You published research breakthroughs. You invented new technologies, and you fought for social justice, including for your DACA classmates some of whom are graduating with you today. Above all, you never wavered. You wanted to be in the fray. Confronted by this once a century pandemic that altered every aspect of your education and personal lives, you demonstrated strength, empathy, resilience, and perseverance. You showed your profound compassion for your patients, your classmates, and your fellow human beings. You never let go of that thirst for knowledge and the desire to affect change that brought you to Harvard Medical School in the first place. As doctors, we will never possess all the knowledge and expertise we need, but what ultimately allows us to succeed, what allows our profession to carry the well-justified honor, respect, and trust of the communities we care for are the very traits you have so clearly demonstrated. If you care for your patients with compassion, sensitivity, and respect, if you embrace the truth that you are forever a student with an open mind, limitless curiosity, and relentless desire to use your skills and knowledge to alleviate suffering, to improve people's lives, and to make the world better, you will be great doctors, no matter the circumstance, no matter the events that transpire. I want to thank you for all that you have done and will do in service to Harvard Medical School and to the world. I am honored to now call you my colleagues on behalf of your teachers, mentors, and the alumni community that you now join. I want to say again, congratulations. We can't wait to see what you accomplish next. Dr. Aditya Achanta, Dr. Michael Alcala, Dr. Varnell Lorden Antoine, Dr. Charles Higgins Brower, Dr. Patricia Corona, also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Nicholas Regis Di Stefano. Dr. Ahmed Dia Eldon El Naim, Dr. Andrew Robert Emery, Dr. Bryn Elizabeth Fallahi, also receiving a Master's in Medical Science, Dr. Michael Aaron Fuchs, 
Dr. Daniel Gonzalez, Dr. Ashwini Joshi, Dr. Ravanth Sai Kosaraju, Dr. Jonathan James Kushner, Dr. Kara Lynn Lathrop, Dr. Jessica Nicole Laird Guion, Dr. Chloe Yang Ling Lee, Dr. Juan Louise Macias, Dr. Chase Christian Marceau, Dr. Bridget Elizabeth Matsas, Dr. Connor McMullen Naravik. Also receiving a Master's in Business Administration, Dr. Vartan Palhalians. Also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Seishan Hitesh Patel. Dr. Natalie Amelia Beatrix Prosiver. Dr. Angel Mauricio Reyes. Dr. Hannah Olivia Scott. Dr. Morgan Sadev. Dr. Miriam Silla. Dr. Regina Parker Tamposi. Dr. Anthony Tucker Bartley. Also receiving a Master's in Business Administration, Dr. Nathan Hamilton Verity. Dr. Kruthi Bagareth Vora. Dr. Chloe Billy Warner. Also receiving a Master's in Business Administration, Dr. Chen Wei. Also receiving a Master's in Public Health, Dr. Rachel Eliza Weitzman. Dr. Tian Tian White. Dr. Sohail Zahid. Dr. Alan Siliang Zhou. Dr. Rachel Chapman Acker. Dr. Huma Saeed Baig. Dr. Taylor Aaron Brown. Dr. Corbin Daniel Esther. Dr. Samantha Mina Guhan. Dr. Ryoko Hamaguchi. Also graduating with a Master's of Public Policy, Dr. Garrett Michael Johnson. Dr. Kathleen Josephine Koenigs. Dr. Ruby B. Guac. Dr. Benjamin Edmund Landwerseek. Dr. Nelson C. Malone. Dr. Catherine Grace McDaniel, Dr. Kelly Hevener McFarlane, Dr. Devon Emily McMahon, Dr. Githika Mera, Dr. Dana Mustafa, Dr. Ruchit Bupesh Nagar, Dr. Mahan Nakui. Dr. Alma Jessica Onyate Munoz. Dr. Andrew William Parsons. Dr. Francisco Luis Ramos. Dr. Annabel Starosta. Dr. Matthew J. Townsend. Dr. Natalie Elizabeth Williams. Dr. Linda Shu, Dr. Dahai Yang. Also graduating with a Master's of Business Administration, Dr. Mark M. Zaki. 
Also graduating with a Master's of Business Administration, Dr. Mike Genyu Zai. Dr. Titi Mayo Aranola Afalavi. Dr. Jacob Paul Ariano Anderson. Dr. Amy Alana Blum. Dr. Thomas Wolcott Church. Also receiving a doctorate of philosophy, Dr. David James Cote. Dr. E.S. Saad Dockers. Also receiving a doctorate of philosophy, Dr. Richard Jan Ebright. Dr. Anna Potter Fang. Dr. Jacob Boalha. Also receiving a Master's of Business Administration, Dr. Samantha Taylor Harris. Also receiving a Master's of Public Health, Dr. Gabriella Roxanne Herrera. Dr. Julia Marie Heiserot. Dr. Zachary Philip Johannesson. Also receiving a Doctorate of Philosophy, Dr. Sunjin Lee. Dr. Timothy Michael McGinnis. Dr. Brenna Ray Nelson. Dr. Sarah Elizabeth Onorado. Dr. Jordan Michael Peterson. Dr. Ali Syed Razan. Dr. Nikolai Edward Renato. Dr. Larissa Shagabaeva. Dr. Maria Cicely Thomas. Dr. Leah Luisa Thompson. Dr. Manuela Von Snader. Also receiving a Master's of Public Policy, Dr. Isabel Jeanette Rijanko. Also receiving a Master's of Public Health, Dr. Lucas T. Whitman. Dr. Anna Ho Zhao. Dr. Joyce Cheeler Zhao. Dr. Ute Agarwal. Dr. Baturai Ithamir. Dr. Eric Lane Bow. Dr. Elizabeth Hockfield Byrne. Also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Anne Morgan Cathcart. Dr. John Joseph Sermsack. Dr. Catherine Redfield Chan. Also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Jacob Alexander Donahue. Also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Sanan Ibrahim. Also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Jennifer Yahweh Ga. Also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. David Benjamin Gutenberg. Also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Sharon Rachel Grossman. Also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. James Martin Harris. Also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Thomas Patrick Howard III. Dr. Anthony Inju Jang. Also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Mark Kalanich. Also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Aditya Srimadav Kaluri. Dr. Nicholas Wingping Kwok. Also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Yuzhong Meng. 
Also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. David N. Reshef. Also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Abigail Esther Schiff. Also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Irini Heidi Sidholm. Also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Mac Y. Su. Also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Swan Lian Twang. Also receiving a Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Adrian Varesh. Dr. Constance Wu. Dr. Xiaoling Yu. Dr. James Paul Agolio. Dr. Stephanie Lee Alden. Also receiving the Master of Business Administration, Dr. Troy B. Amen. Dr. Sepeda Ashrafzada. Dr. Emily Grandier Block. Dr. Jonathan Avram Brasky. Dr. Caitlin Alana Brittin. Dr. Tram Nock Bowie. Dr. Denston Emmanuel Carey Jr. Dr. Enchi Christina Chang. Dr. Alexis Marie Coolidge. Dr. Edward Christopher D. Also receiving the Master of Business Administration, Dr. Kirby Lee Erlanson. Dr. Jonathan Ralph Franco. Dr. Lisa Ning Guo. Dr. Melody Wong. Dr. Jane Margaret Irwin. Dr. Yisi Daisy G. Dr. Catherine Patrice Kester. Dr. Carlton Lawrence. Also receiving the Master of Public Health, Dr. Michelle Lee. Also receiving the Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Hen Losos. Also receiving the Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Ethan Bagley Manolin. Also receiving the Master of Business Administration, Dr. William Stephen Murphy. Dr. Sarah M. Nizavako. Also receiving the Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Jamaji Chilaka Wanaji and Wera. Dr. Hema Venkat Pingali. Dr. Aaron Jean Plus Ogin. Also receiving the Master of Public Health, Dr. Esma Zain Al Abdin Ramawi. Dr. Michael William Seward. Dr. Helen Hao Shang. Dr. Abra Herting Shen. Dr. Hazik Faisal Siddiqui. Dr. Sonia Yvonne Ye. Dr. Zizi Yu. Dr. Amy Zhang. Dr. Evan Tongji Zhang. On behalf of the graduating Harvard Medical School and Harvard School of Dental Medicine, class of 2021, we now have the pleasure of introducing our incredible faculty, resident, and staff award recipients. Our first award is the Leonard Tao Humanism Award from the Arnold P. Gold Foundation. This award is presented annually to a faculty member who demonstrates outstanding compassion in the delivery of care, respect for patients, their families, and healthcare colleagues, as well as demonstrates clinical excellence. 
We're pleased to announce this year's winner, Dr. Sam Tanyos. Our next award is the Excellence in Classroom Instruction Award, for which we recognize four incredible faculty. We present this award today to Drs. Jen Casper, Dana Stearns, Michael Dugan, and Stephanie Dugan. Thank you for contributing to a wonderful HMS student educational experience. We now turn to our next award, the Excellence in Clinical Instruction Award. We're thrilled to recognize three tremendous clinician educators, Drs. Kevin Raskin, Kate Treadway, and Jonathan Wing. Our final Harvard Medical School Faculty Award is the Outstanding Faculty Mentor Award. We are overjoyed to recognize three incredible faculty members, Dr. Bernard Chang, Dr. Meredith Atkins, and Dr. Andrea Schwartz. We've also had some wonderful advisors mentor us as we navigated a difficult and virtual residency application season. This year, we'd like to recognize three faculty for the Excellence in Residency Advising Award, Dr. Bernard Chang, Dr. Anthony D'Amico, and Dr. Laura Avery. In addition to working with tremendous faculty, we've also had the great joy to work alongside outstanding resident physicians. For this year's Excellence in Clinical Instruction Residence Award, we are thrilled to recognize four incredible resident physicians, Dr. Wilfredo Matias, Dr. Haurla El Lawati, Dr. Donna Alvino, and Dr. Sabrina Karim. Lastly, Harvard Medical School wouldn't be the special place that it is without its incredible staff. This year, for the Staff Student Life Award, we would like to recognize the incredible and dedicated Mr. Michael Tremonti. We now turn to awards given by the graduating Harvard School of Dental Medicine class of 2021. Our first award is for outstanding teaching faculty. We are pleased to recognize two wonderful faculty members, Dr. Shigemi Nagai, and Dr. Luis Lopez. We also recognize Dr. Chiho An, this year's winner of our Outstanding Resident Teaching Award. Finally, we recognize Mr. Charles Moyley as the recipient of our Outstanding Staff Award. Given the difficulties that presented this year due to the pandemic, these members of our community went above and beyond to ensure the exceptional quality of our education. We are thrilled to announce these faculty, resident, and staff awards. We will now have members of our class recite our class oath. We first recited this oath at our white coat ceremony four years ago at the start of our professional education. We now reaffirm this oath before launching into our careers in dentistry and medicine, committing to excellence for our patients and our profession. Today, we pledged all those here today with recognition of the education and experience gained on the ancestral land of the Massachusetts people. That according to my ability and judgment, we'll keep this oath. We pledge to our patients to do no harm, uphold your autonomy, protect your privacy, and be your partner in the journey towards healing. We will approach each person holistically and humbly, offering a listening ear and a hungry mind. We recognize our patients' lived experiences, strengths and resiliences so that their wellness can be rooted in empowerment. We are prepared to confront and explore disease with both ardor and empathy so that our patients can move through illness with dignity. We pledge to our families to remember the sacrifice made and work done by so many before and beside us so that we can take this title doctor. We will continue to challenge ourselves, grow and excel for the service and care of others. We honor the lives lived and legacies left by those who were hurt by medicine and aspire to transform care so that it can meet the needs of our country's people. We'll uplift our communities, magnify their voices, and advocate for health equity and justice. We pledge to each other, our peers, our teachers, and mentors to remain curious, embrace our mistakes, and commit to a life of learning. We realize that medicine is an art that we must carry out with patience, reflection, attention, and collaboration. We commit to this practice alongside our interprofessional colleagues and friends so that we can ensure patient-centered progress. 
we will turn to scientific evidence, discovery, and innovation in our decisions and treatment plans. And we welcome the call to leadership where our decisions and policies have the opportunity to alleviate suffering. We pledge to ourselves to remain true and reflect on what inspired us to pursue medicine. We will remember the experiences, the stories, and the love that shaped this calling in our most difficult moments. And we will take care of ourselves and one another, striving to find joy and purpose every day. From this day forward. From this day forward. From this day forward. I freely and fearlessly take this oath and accept the responsibilities of a physician. May I uphold the honor of this profession and care for any person in need. To our illustrious graduates, congratulations. We look forward to your future and your exciting careers in the service of others. Good day. Thank you.